In this lesson, we're going to be looking at database management systems. In particular, you need to show an understanding of the features that are provided by a database management system and how they go about addressing the issues of a file-based approach. You also need to show an understanding of how software tools found within a DBMS are used in practice in real life. Now, from those two syllabus statements, you can probably guess that DBMS is just a piece of software that you use to create databases. So kind of like an IDE, but for databases. Now, as usual, we're going to begin with looking at some key terms involved with database management systems. So let's start with database management systems. These are system software for the definition, creation, and manipulation of a database. And of course, we need to learn how to manage data. So data management is a key term, and that involves the organization and maintenance of data in a database to provide the information that's required. Another term is data dictionary, which is basically a set of data that contains metadata, which basically means data about other data for a database. So for example, if you're storing primary keys, data about that, table names, entities, attributes, all of those kind of things. Data modeling, which is the analysis and definition of data structures required in a database and to produce a data model itself. Logical schema, a data model for a specific database that is independent of the DBMS used to build that database. So for example, you might create a database using a DBMS, but then you're going to be using it with a program or another package. And finally, you've got access rights, which are the permissions given to database users to access, modify, or delete data because you don't want everybody to go about editing data. So you might have certain people who have access to writing data, reading and writing data, editing data, and so on. So do pause the video and jot these down. The next set of key terms involve the actual parts of a database management system. So you've got a developer interface, which is a feature of the DBMS that provides developers with commands required for definition, creation, and manipulation of a database. You've got structured query language, SQL, which is a standard query language used within relational databases for data definition and data modification. And then you've got something called a query processor, which is a feature of a DBMS that processes and executes queries written in SQL. So do pause the video and do jot these key terms down. And we'll start looking at how a DBMS addresses limitations of a file-based approach. Now, from the previous video, you should have picked up that there are data redundancy issues, data inconsistency issues, data dependency issues. All of these happen when you have multiple files storing similar data. Now, using a DBMS, this is normally solved using a number of different techniques. For example, let's look at the data redundancy issue. This is solved by storing data in separate link tables, which reduces the duplication of data as most items of data are only stored once. For example, think about normalization. And what actually happens is that apart from the foreign keys, which obviously do need to be repeated, the database management system will flag any possible errors when any attempt is made to accidentally delete this type of an item. So there is already limited chance of data redundancy occurring. Now think about it this way. We had an issue where we thought, well, OK, what if we've got students, and the students are taught by a teacher, and the teacher is stored in a separate teacher table using a teacher ID. Now, if you're linking them together, and say, for example, we delete the teacher record from the teacher table because the teacher has left, then all those students will probably be still linked to that old number or the teacher ID number, and that can cause data redundancy. However, a DBMS system will automatically pick that up and flag it for you and say, well, if you're going to delete this person, these are the issues that will crop up. And then you might need to change that perhaps to a new teacher or to another existing teacher. The next issue is the data inconsistency issue. And this is also solved by storing most items of data only once, allowing updated items to be seen by all applications. As data is not inconsistent, the integrity of data stored is improved as well. Consistent data is easier to maintain as an item of data will only be changed once, not multiple times by different applications. So let's just say the teacher changes their particular address 
or the teacher changes their name. So if you had teacher data being repeated for every student, then you would need to make this change or these changes for every single student record. However, since the teacher data is only stored once in the teacher table, we just need to make the change there. And because they're already linked with primary and foreign keys, that data is automatically replicated for all the students. So that means that the data is not inconsistent and the integrity of the database is maintained. Now, how does it deal with the data dependency issue? Well, in the file-based example, we had two programs which were storing data in different files. Using a DBMS, the data is independent of the applications using the database. So changes made to the structure of the data are actually managed by the DBMS and they have little or no effect on the application using the database. All the data is stored within the DBMS and the two applications, like for example, sales and payroll that we talked about in last lesson, they just simply access the data. Any fields or tables added to or removed from the database will not affect the applications that do not use those fields. Each application only has access to the fields or tables that it requires. Information from a database is then more easily available in a form that is required, so it's not dependent on the structure of the data and the application use itself. All you need to define is that from the database, you need the first name, surname, staff ID number, and whatever other information, and you just simply use that in your application. The database might contain other bits and pieces of information, other tables, which might be used by other programs, for example, a sales department might combine first name and surname into name and then utilize that bit. And that's all possible because the data is now totally independent from the application. A DBMS usually includes facilities to query the data stored using a defined query language or a query by example facilities. And using these, you can structure the data that's already in the database into a form that's required by an external application. So using these approaches, it can solve the data dependency issue, which is a limitation of a file-based approach. Now the DBMS approach is a more structured approach to the management and organization and even the maintenance of data in a database. An already defined data structure can be used to set up and create the database itself, the entry of new data, the storage of data, the alteration and deletion of data are all managed by the DBMS itself. It uses a data dictionary to store the metadata, which includes the definitions of tables, attributes, relationship between tables, and any indexing used. The data dictionary can also define the validation rules used for the entry of data and contain data about the physical storage of the data. The use of data dictionary improves the integrity of the data stored because it helps to ensure that it's accurate, complete, and consistent. So by looking at the data dictionary, you can actually understand how the database was constructed, and that allows you to make any future changes as well. Another aspect of DBMS is data modeling and security. Data modeling in itself is an important tool used to show the data structure of a database. For example, you already know about the use of entity relationship diagrams. A logical schema is a data model for a specific database that is independent of the DBMS used to build the database. So you can create these data models, you can design them in a database management system and then use them with external programs with ease. In addition to that, a DBMS helps to provide data security to prevent the unwanted alteration, corruption, deletion or sharing of data with others that might have no right to access it. Now, the, some of the security measures that a DVMS can take include usernames and passwords to prevent unauthorized access, using access rights to manage the actions that authorized users themselves do, and these can range from read, write, delete, or read-only, or append-only. Access rights can be used to manage the parts of a database that they have access to, and for different users, like for a manager, a different view of the database can be provided compared to somebody who is just entering data. And similarly, a director of the company might get a top-level approach or a top-level view for the data. 
and that is all possible using a DBMS. In addition, it allows the automatic creation and scheduling of regular backups. Encryption of the data stored is also possible via DBMS, along with the automatic creation of an audit trail or activity log to record the actions taken by the users of the database. So if you try to edit something or change something, it's logged somewhere so you can trace it. And all of this helps in securing the database against data corruption, deletion, or unwanted alteration. Now to help us do all of that, DBMS has a select number of tools which are very useful and these include the developer interface which allows a developer to write queries in structured query language rather than using a query by example view. These queries are then processed and executed by the query processor and this allows construction of more complex queries to interrogate the database. Of course, it will also have things like wizards in there which allow you to automate basic searches or queries. However, that structured query language aspect is very, very powerful. And it also has that query processor we just mentioned a moment ago, which takes a query written in SQL and processes it. The query processor includes a DDL, which is data definition language interpreter, and a DML, which is a data manipulation language compiler, and a query evaluation engine. This will be the focus of our next lesson. Any DDL statements are interpreted and recorded in the database's data dictionary. DML statements are then compiled into low-level instructions that are executed by the query evaluation engine. The compiler also helps in optimizing the query itself. The next session will be looking at DML and DDL, but for now, you should know how a DBMS helps in solving the limitations of a file-based approach. You should also know the purpose of a data dictionary and what it contains, what is meant by data modeling, how does a DBMS keep data secure? And you should be able to explain two features of a DBMS, which include the developer interface and the query processor. That's all for today. I'll see you in the next lesson.